Hi there. Today we're going to talk about the fretting hand. Okay, so the fretting hand, for me that's my left hand. For most of us it may be the left hand. And we call it the fretting hand because it's going to play the frets. So the frets are these metal bars here. And that changes our length of string. So my string is as long as from this nut to this nut when played open. But once I start playing frets, I make it a little bit smaller. Now the string ends here and it's only between these two. Now it's only between these two points, it's gonna sound even higher. The smaller your string, the higher the pitch becomes. So, obviously the frets are very important. That's how we, we get more sounds other than the uh, open strings themselves, which are really only five different notes because we have E twice. So now that we can use our fretting hand, we can play, well, all the notes. So in Western music, we only acknowledge the notes from one fret to the next, but there actually are notes in between, which some instruments like the piano cannot play. Us on guitar, we can play those notes. So we'll learn about how to do that in the lesson on bends. Okay, so for now, just basic fretting hand technique. So our fingers are numbered. Our index is one, our middle finger is two, ring finger is three, and our pinky finger is four. Okay, so this is to help keep us uh, from getting confused because these ones are lettered, right? So if you see letters, they're talking about the right hand. If you see numbers, they're talking about the left hand. <laughs> of course, that's generally speaking. We use letters and numbers for a ton of stuff in music. So you could see letters and numbers that don't mean your fingers. <laughs> But if you see letters or numbers that mean your fingers, the letters mean this hand and the numbers mean this hand. Okay, great. Um, the thumb doesn't get a number, by the way. Sometimes it is used as a wraparound where you go on the other side of the neck here, and that will be labeled T for thumb if you ever do see that. Okay, great. So when we play our frets here, we typically don't want our thumb up here. That's a very interesting technique to actually use the thumb to fret. But generally speaking, we need the thumb in the very back of the guitar and that's going to help us get a nice pinch so when we play these frets we have to essentially squeeze the string down to the fretboard okay so we sort of have to pinch it like this our thumb needs to be behind so if i try to have my thumb further away from where that work is happening it doesn't work so great so let's say my thumb is over here i'm gonna put it on the back but it's going to be up in this area around the first fret let's say i'm trying to play with my pinky on the fifth fret here I can do that because I've, I've practiced for a long time, so that's actually pretty easy for me, but it, it, a, a beginner attempting that would probably have a very difficult time because they'd have to squeeze their pinky very hard. And you can see that where my thumb is and my pinky is are not the same place, so they're not really helping each other. But if my thumb was closer this way, closer to as if they were pinching, and now much easier to play that note. So your thumb needs to be on the back of the guitar, kind of moving with your fingers. Generally speaking, I like to leave it in between the second and third finger because that's sort of in the middle of my hand. So then if my first finger is doing something and the thumb is sort of in the middle, it's still kind of close enough. Or if my pinky's doing some, my thumb's in the middle, it's still kind of close enough. If not, perhaps I'll move it right behind the pinky or right behind where it needs to be in that exact moment. But in general, you kind of leave it behind the second and third fingers and wherever they go, the thumb follows. Okay, so that's my thoughts on the thumb. That's very important. You can sort of rest it on the upper slope of the back of the guitar as well. If your guitar is kind of sloped, some people leave their thumb up too high and that has some issues that we'll, we'll talk about in a moment. Namely, you can't really reach as many things. So. If my thumb is here, my fingers can only reach about to there, right? You can see that's kind of hard reach for them. But if I slide my thumb back this way, all of a sudden now my fingers can reach wherever they want. So that's important to remember too. Your thumb doesn't have to stay in just one spot on the back of the neck. It can slide all up and down. So mine is sometimes on the top of the slope, sometimes just underneath this slope here. Now, when we fret, we want to use the very tips of our fingers. So that's why it's important to keep the fingernails of the fretting hand very short. So I have my fingernails grown out for classical guitar on the right hand. So it's a little bit weird. You kind of have to have unbalanced fingernails or just keep them all short. But the left hand, it's very essential that they're 
Sure, because we need to use the very tip of our finger when we're connecting on the string. And if the nail is in the way, you won't be able to. You'll only be able to use kind of the side of your finger and not the very tip like we need to. And that's very important because they need to stay out of each other's way. Once we start playing chords, we'll have multiple fingers playing multiple strings. And if they're all coming in sideways, then the one, if, if I'm using this finger, for instance, and I'm not using the tip of it, but rather this part, well now this whole finger is muting all the strings. This part of it is touching all my other strings that I don't want it to touch, and that's causing it to deaden the sound. Okay? But if I, if I get it to stand up nice and tall, it will stay out of, out of the way of the other strings. So, using the tip of the finger, very important, okay? Next is where to place your finger. So, this entire sort of window, see how it kind of creates boxes between the nut and the first fret is sort of like a box between the second and the third fret, or excuse me, first and second, second and third, there's kind of like boxes there, right? And no matter where in that box that you press down, I'm gonna do the third fret, so you can see I have a dot here, so hopefully this will be easier to follow along at home. I have anywhere in this box to play that. That is not true on a violin, by the way. That's what the fret does. The fret stops at this exact point, so it doesn't matter that we didn't push it down at this exact point. We can be a little bit behind it, but we shouldn't be, okay? The, the more I am towards the other fret, so I'm trying to get the third fret, and I wanna be close to the third fret. If I'm close to the second fret, it still sounds like the third fret, but it doesn't sound as good because there's not as no, enough tension pushing down the string right here at the third fret where the, where the pitch sounds, okay? So you, you wanna be as close to that fret as possible. If you get right on top of it, it starts to sound a little weird too, so you don't wanna be right on top of it. I like to th think about getting to the corner of it. So you can try this, you can try putting it on sort of in the middle there and then sliding right up against the side of the fret kind of like the corner of the fret. You go right for that corner between the fret and the, and the fingerboard. And then you use your very tip of your finger, okay? Doing a little vibrato, which means shaking. No, that's an advanced technique that will be touched upon at a later point. Okay, and that's the basic technique. The very tip of the finger. right in the corner of the fret. Sometimes we'll have to break this rule a little bit. For instance, if I'm doing an A chord, a lot of times an A chord can be played many different ways, but a lot of times it'll be like this, and we will do a, a more thorough explanation of an A chord at a later point, so don't worry about that. But just for demonstration, that's an A chord, and you can see that this first finger is pretty far away from that fret, and there just isn't enough room to have them all right there if I'm using three fingers, which is why I would probably play my A chord with only two fingers or possibly even only one finger. That's one of the reasons I might prefer those fingerings because I can get closer to the fret. But if you're new to this and you're not able to use two fingers, this three finger version is a great way. We'll learn this later. But as you can see, it kind of pushes this finger out of the way. And it still sounds okay. So not the end of the world always, but in general, you really want to aim to be in the corner of that fret. Okay, so that's the very basics of how the fretting hand works. And we'll learn some exercises to cover how to uh, strengthen your fingers and get used to playing in this way shortly. Thanks for joining me for this lesson. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next lesson.